it's me Crystal and today I am going to do an author tag that I saw on Kristen Martin's YouTube channel and hopefully I remember to link that video below it was about a year ago and yeah I have all the questions written down not neat on this piece of paper so I'm going to look at that and question number one where is your favorite place to write so I'm boring <laughs> So my favorite place to write is here at my desk, which is like kind of um, squished in like this corner in my living room. Question number two, coffee or tea? I actually do really like coffee, but if I'm going to drink something, my the first thing I'm going to reach for is going to be chai tea. I'm obsessed and hot or cold, um, I don't care. I also really like green tea. And I wouldn't consider myself a green tea person, but I had like a frozen green tea drink at like this coffee shop in a bookstore one time a few years ago. And it was like so good. So that's like my go-to Starbucks drink is the matcha green tea frappuccino with coconut milk. And it kind of tastes like ice cream to me. Not sure why. Question number three. Favorite book of all time? Okay, so I actually got these books off the bookshelf. And I have two. One is this. Gosh, this book is old. This is from the 90s. It is The Forbidden Game by L.J. Smith. It's uh, three books in one. As you can see, I've read this book a lot. It is in poor shape. And I think about replacing it sometimes. But I will keep this as long as the pages will not fall out everywhere. Which they're kind of starting to fall out. But that's one of them. And because I, I consider all three of these books to be one book because that's how I bought it in the 90s. <laughs> and then my other favorite book is The Witching Hour by Anne Rice. This book is a thousand something pages long, like a thousand sixty eight pages. It is so long and it took me, like I had a 10% rule back in the day. And so I'm like, it has, the book has 10 uh, percent of the total number of pages to get interesting or I put it down and so this book got, had a hundred pages it took me 40 pages to get into the book it also took me like a week because like this print is like super tiny and I was in high school and I wasn't used to reading books with print this <laughs> tiny and Anyway, it's it's so good. Like once I understood what was going on, I kind of didn't understand what was going on until like page 50, but it started to get really interesting around page 35-40. And oh my gosh, it's so good. It's funny because the climax is like on page like 1050. It's like right near the end. And so it's like this whole there's like a thousand something pages of this build-up, and then like something crazy happens and then it's over and it is so good. Okay, <laughs> number four, NaNoWriMo, yes or no? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've done NaNoWriMo a few times. I tend to start off books pretty slow. Um, it can take me probably a month, sometimes two, to like get going on the book really well. And also it depends on what else I'm doing. Because lately I've also been like editing and writing at the same time. And so I'm like, I'll put my whatever I'm drafting aside to like edit. And so it's still not taking me that long though. I've actually been a little bit more productive. I don't know how that's working out. But I don't know, like NaNoWriMo tends to mess me up because I'm a slow starter. So yeah, I'll spend like a month or two on like the first like 30 or percent of the book. And then like the next like 70 percent, I'll be done in like three or four weeks. And so NaNoWriMo doesn't really help me start because like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I, I need time to like, <laughs> I don't know, like, get a good rhythm going with a new story, if that makes sense. So, I, I like NaNoWriMo, and I love the energy around NaNoWriMo, but I haven't done it in a while, because, yeah. So, question number five. What genre would you write if you had no restrictions? Um, I feel like... 
I feel like I, I, we're right when I'm ready now. I really like when I'm ready now. But I do like, uh, like, historical fiction. So, I don't know. Probably, like, what I'm doing now first. And then historical, some kind of, like, a high drama, historical, supernatural, dark something second. Question number six. If you could have any superpower, what would that be? Oh my gosh. I have no idea. So I'm kind of torn between like having Phoenix's powers from the X-Men because how, like, first of all, Phoenix is not very stable to begin with, but I'm obsessed with those, with, with her powers, but I'm also on the flip side, because I kind of consider those to be like fire powers. On the flip side, I kind of want to have ice powers. Like, I would love to like be able to like make it snow or like freeze somebody. <laughs> I took a BuzzFeed quiz one time. This is what kind of mermaid would you be? And it said I would be an evil mermaid with ice powers. And I was like, hello, accurate, love it. Number seven, favorite author. Um, I don't know. I feel like, okay, so I picked this book up, and this is the only book I've read so far by Catherine Lasky, but I don't know, it was so beautiful, and I was like, this is the most beautiful book that I've ever read in my life, and I was just so, like, like entranced by it, and like, just really into reading it, and I don't know, I think she's brilliant, and I want to read some more of her work. And it's kind of weird picking her to be my favorite writer because I only wrote this one thing. But I am, I'm like obsessed with that book. So it's like a, I think it's a middle grade fantasy, like n historical fantasy. It's like 1920s or 30s or something like that. Question number eight What kind of music do you listen to when you write? So, I like silence. <laughs> um, I can listen to like um, music with no lyrics, like just instrumental music, um, to sometimes to set the mood. I can sometimes listen to music with lyrics too. Again, if it's a mood thing, and as soon as that scene is done, the music has to go off because I like silence. Um, I do sometimes make playlists for my stories, but I kind of just listen to that music in the car. Um, and also, um, if I'm, like, stuck on a scene, I'll play some music from the playlist. And I'm like, okay, I, I kind of remember, like, why I wanted to write this story in the first place. Um, number nine. If you could live anywhere, where would that be? I don't know. I went to Scotland when I was in college, and I love Scotland. So I would love to live in Scotland, just anywhere in Scotland. Um, I kind of want to say New Zealand, though. <laughs> I don't know why. I just kind of feel like I think I would like to live in New Zealand. Yeah. But, you know, Scotland, New Zealand, Hawaii, Canada, the mountains. Anyway, there are mountains. And the last question, what do you do when you get writer's block? I just, I, you know, put hands up, walk away, do something else. So, like, I'll dance around. Um, one time I was on vacation, and I felt like I just couldn't write anything. And I, like, went into the woods, and I am not a woods person. <laughs> I am not an outdoorsy person. So, um... Yeah, so I'll do things like that, like things that make me a little uncomfortable, like going into the woods or, you know, just going somewhere new. Some new scenery really helps. And then also, like, music helps and just doing something else or binge watching something fun on Netflix. Um, there's not a single time that I felt stuck on something or, like, just, like, super, like, neurotic and unable to write where, like, a couple episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer hasn't fixed. So, that is the tag. And if you ever done the tag or if you want to do the tag, link your video below. I'd like to see it. 
and yeah so that's all I have for today and hopefully I'll see you on another Monday and bye